Snow Tracks is sponsored by ski -Doo. What matters is what's next. Yamaha Conquer Snow. And by FXR Racing Full Throttle Addiction. Tighten your chin straps. On this week's test ride, we're going to pull the sheets off of one of model year 18's most highly anticipated limited build sleds. Are you ready? Here comes the all new G4 Skidoo MXZ 600R E-Tech. It's pretty obvious Skidoo wants to build more G4s to fill out their model line. Since its intro one year ago, the G4 platform with the 850 E-Tech has moved into the Summit lineup, the Renegade lineup, and the MXZ family. What's been missing is another engine to complement the G4 chassis in these segments. Clearly, Skidoo sells more sleds than everyone else in the biz, and therefore they sell a ton of 600s. Tooling up a new 600 E-Tech mill for the G4 chassis was, and is, the next step. The Series 3 600 E-Tech engine from Skidoo is one of the most venerable engines in the entire snowmobile marketplace. It is the engine that brought us E-Tech direct injection way back in model year 2008. That being said, it was clearly time for a 600 class tune-up from Skidoo. I had the distinct privilege of traveling to Austria in October 2017 to witness the birth of the very first 600 E-Tech engines built specifically for the G4 platform. The innovation I witnessed in the new 600 was impressive. The 600R gets electronically triggered raves, a complete new injector system, the G4's unique flat stator and all new ultra skinny cases, allowing the 600 engine to be mounted over two inches to the right, centering the engine side to side in the chassis. This radical reorientation of both the 850 and the 600R in the G4 chassis plays to better handling and overall balance. Two things the new 600R engine does not carry over from the 850 G4 are the E-Tech boost injectors and the 850's two-piece forge crankshaft. According to the brain trust at Rotax, the new E-Tech system on the 600R does not require the 850's boost injectors. The multi-piece built-up crank used on the new 600R is more than adequate for the power level the engine produces. You may be wondering if there's an increase in horsepower with the new engine. It depends on how much power you believe the Series 3 E-Tech produced. We were told the new 600R delivers 125 ponies. We can tell you this for sure. When it comes to low RPM torque and mid-range squeeze, there is just no comparison between the old Series 3 600 and the new 600R E-Tech. At the speeds you ride most, the new 600R feels like an 800. The motor pulls hard down low and right through the mid-range. Peak power comes at 8,100 RPM, and by the time you reach full whack, you'll be wondering if that's really a 600 under the hood. The engine also displays improved smoothness and reduced intake howl. The G4 chassis uses a new engine mounting system, and the engine feels more refined overall. Keep in mind, this is the first time the P-Drive primary clutch has been used in a consumer available 600 class snowmobile. The P-Drive roller tower design is so friction free, it's almost like free horsepower. The rest of the G4 600R package is very familiar. The radical far forward ergos debuted on the 850 require both faithful skidoo owners and brand switchers some time to adjust. The G4's ergo step side panels and adjustable bar riser make rider gymnastics easy and somewhat necessary when railing twisties. The flat top seat works in concert with the adjustable riser, allowing riders to stretch out on high speed runs and move their weight rearward. G4 handling has required some getting used to. Not anymore. The move away from tunable skis to the more familiar Pilot 5.7s has had a dramatic effect, and it's a good one on handling. Other 600R G4 details are precisely the same as the 850 G4. The innovative sandwich style tunnel houses and circulates engine coolant without the use of extruded coolers. The seat, as we indicated previously, is flat at the rear and narrow as the rider moves forward to enhance athletic activity. The footrests are fully open and come with a cast upper toe hold. Skidoo claims the open style footrests promote better foot movement. We're still not sure about this. The big question which must be asked about the G4 MXZ 600R is whether or not this package has enough sizzle to attract a legion of XP and XS 600 E-Tech buyers to the next big thing. 
We think the answer is easy and clear. This all new 600 class entry represents the very best of what Skidoo has developed since 2003, when the very first rider forward rev appeared. History has recorded the appearance of the original rev changed the snowmobile as we know it forever. So yes, there is enough innovation in the new G4 600R to make this vehicle fully worthy of the rev handle. As a result of this, the new 600R and all its variants are virtually guaranteed to be a huge hit in model year 2019. In the past 10 years or so, FXR has gone from a relatively small snowmobile clothing company to one of the most well-known and recognized brands in the entire industry. And while FXR has seen almost unbelievable growth with trail riders, the past five years it's been in the mountains that the brand has transformed modern sled gear and has gained traction with dozens of the industry's top mountain and backcountry riders under the FXR banner. But what I think is the most interesting about FXR is that they have been and always will be a grassroots company that's focused on the same thing today as they were at day one. And that is providing gear that allows riders to reach their full potential no matter what type of riding they do. So the past few seasons, FXR has increased their focus on snowcross, both in terms of gear and rider support. Racing is so much just a mental state of mind. It's your confidence. So you learn a lot uh, with your riders of what they like and what they don't like, and because they, they're looking for every advantage. And with the racers, we're really able to, to push that envelope and, and create unique products. We've often introduced new color combos for them, and we'll see you know career best results out of them on those days. And there's, there's definitely something when they look good and feel good and it builds their confidence. And they're not just the typical, like, here's your gear, good luck. They're saying, okay, here's your gear, let us know if you need anything else, how can we improve, what can we do to help? And they're like so eager to produce something new that's better, that's lighter, that's warmer, whatever it is. And to see like that, that eagerness to make a better product. That's what's really fun to work with FXR because they're just, they're never, never settling for anything. They're always looking for a, a better product. Obviously FXR is dedicated to providing racers with durable, stylish, and functional gear. But for FXR, it goes far beyond that in their support for the racing community. To truly support racers and teams, Milt believes you need to give them the tools that give them the confidence to push themselves as hard as they can every single race. So this season, FXR has thrown a lot of support behind the ISOC series as a whole. Being involved with ISOC is that next dimension, just making sure that they have the additional support they need, uh, both financially and, and in whatever way that we can support them. We just felt that we needed to, to be there and, and to be intimately involved um, in, in supporting the industry, both, both through sponsoring ISOC and now more recently the last two years, the FXR Medical Mobile Trailer. The FXR Mobile Medical Center is a trailer that's fully equipped, not just with all the equipment you'd need, but with nurses as well as a certified ER doctor. Over the past few years, FXR has been the largest sponsor of this trailer, along with Dr. Ken Parsons, who gave us a tour of the facility. Hey everybody, this is Dr. Parsons. I'm a board certified emergency physician who's been around the snowcross circuit for a long time and pretty proud to show you what we have in our FXR mobile medical trailer. We're here at Canterbury Park and we're going to take you inside and show you the different modalities that we have to assess the injured riders. So come on in. In the event you have some difficulty breathing or need to monitor your blood pressure or pulse ox in that, we have a full state-of-the-art cardiac monitor which allows me to assess every one of your vital signs. We move over here, this is our ortho scan fluoro and within seconds I can rule out a fracture about this fast. That's the picture of my hand right there, obviously you see my ring. Ruling out a fracture is key because we can get you back out on the track really quick. In the event you take a hard hit to the bars or maybe have some belly pain, another key piece of equipment here is our ultrasound machine. And with this wand, I can essentially look inside your abdomen and evaluate your liver, your spleen, um, bladder, and even do uh, check out your cardiac function and we can look for fluid in the abdomen in, in a trauma situation, it would be blood. So obviously 
that's a pretty significant injury that um, you'd be off to the hospital for. So up in our, this is Amy's area. We have a certified athletic trainer and uh, she is an expert at supporting and taping joints. So you get that uh, extra support when you're out on track. We have all the capability of doing suturing, splinting, just about everything you need outside of a CAT scan. If you need that, you need to be in the emergency room. We're really doing everything we can to provide the care and support um, after a situation occurs to make sure that the best outcome, the, the athlete recovers the quickest, can be back into racing, often in the same day. If they have any bumps, bruises, they're there. The, the Epics Armo medical team is there to help assist those riders. And you just go across the board in all aspects. FXR is not, they're not just looking at, hey, let's get our gear out there so people are wearing it. They're saying, how can we help the sport? How can we help the sport of snowcross? How can we help the sport of snowmobiling in general? We're not chasing championships or, or titles in any way. We're just supporting riders and racing just, to, just collectively. And for us too, it, it's really important just to see them elevate their game and, and take it to the next level. And, and be there on that journey and, and supporting them in any way that we can. Uh, and psychologically, it's left definitely part of it is, is you put them in great colors or looks and styles and, and to just see them take that energy out on the track and, uh, and often put it on the top of the top step of the podium. It's a fabulous experience and it's a very much a team experience. So, uh, but our hats off to those guys, their commitment's unreal. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Possibly the oldest debate in snowmobiling is what ski you choose for your sled. Whether you're replacing the old school stock steel skis on a classic or dialing in the performance on a new sled, the ski that you choose is incredibly important. Timpex is not new to the ski game. They've been producing high quality replacement skis for years, but right now they offer the broadest range of designs that I've seen. They bring high quality design elements with durability and performance benefits to suit a wide variety of riding styles and help you tune your sled's performance to your riding preferences. Add to this exceptional value, as well as offering mounting kits for pretty much every sled made, as well as a huge selection of color choices for both ski and handle, and you can literally custom tune your ski's performance and style. At the top of my list for value is the Kimpex Rush Ski. It can be bought as a bare ski or as a complete kit, but it offers exceptional customization, performance, and value like few others. I opted for the red base ski, but you have a choice of seven different colors. With a black handle, this ski looks great on the snow and tips the scales at only four pounds, claiming to be the lightest ski on the market. The Rush is a single carbide, 5.5 inch wide design with a deep center keel and small outer rails that create a tunnel-like effect on either side of the carbide. So what does that mean for you? Well, I found the precision of the ski to be excellent, while the steering effort required being very acceptable. I didn't find the rush to produce excess darting and kept up with my corner-to-corner -corner carving easily. Actually, this profile I found really complemented my aggressive riding style and did all of this with only four inches of 60-degree Kimpex Jagged Edge Carbide per side. For me, this ski is a real winner for aggressive on-trail precision. Now, if you're looking to step up your game and increase your front end bite, the next level would be the Aero 2 from Kimpex. It stays at 5.5 inches wide, but it's got a full double carbide design. With six unique colors available for the updated handle design, you can make the Aero 2 complement your sled, but the real benefit here is the precision the ski delivers. When we match up four single side effect, 90 degree six inch carbides, you've got a ski that's going where you point it. Integrated mounting saddles mean no fit kits and reduce weight at just 4.1 pounds per ski. I find the arrow really cuts through the snow due to the deep keels and will deliver maximum connection with the trail because of this. However, consider you've got twice the carbide and twice the keel of most skis, meaning at times you are gonna find the steering effort much firmer than say the rush ski. Case in point on a skidoo that already is very forward weighted, I find this ski more than you might need. Although on the Arctic Cats, Polaris's and Yamaha's, it adds serious front end bite. In hard crusty snow, it's firmly planted, while in lighter fluff, it finds solid grip where other skis will push. The raised rear portion of the ski helps with backing up, keeping the aft section from dropping under the snow crust and rather riding on top. While the previous two skis were focused on the trail, what about those who do more riding off trail? Can you get the best of both worlds with on trail precision and off trail flotation? With many stock skis, the answer is no. 
wide mountain skis don't track well on the trail, but Kimpex has found a unique design that utilizes a 7-inch width, but also a dual carbide profile. The Kimpex Stealth Ski provides a convex hull design, but instead of deep center keels, it has a smooth double carbide mount square in the center. The carbides used are very thin and deep 90-degree runners, and will cut through the trail, but not inhibit off-trail carving and flotation. Utilizing a specific sled mount, you can adjust width up to 3 inches, allowing increased stability or tighter, more precise off-trail handling. Carbides can also be staggered with an optional raised outer carbide to help on-trail steering, or opt for both the same. With two flat pressure zones on the ski's hull and an elevated tail section, the Stealth is designed to erase its carbide tracks, while still allow it to back up easily. I found the off-trail flotation to be incredible with the 7-inch width, and the on-trail effort and drivability was very acceptable considering the off-trail performance it delivers. The handle comes in six color choices, but I went for the classic black on the white ski base that's also offered in black. Every sled has unique handling characteristics. Some we love, some not so much. When it comes to your skis and carbide runners, you can literally fine-tune your sled's ride to your riding style. And when it comes to Kimpex, you don't have to break the budget either. Closed captioning of snow tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers, built for adventure. Over the past four seasons, Articat has steadily been improving their M-Series mountain sled lineup. Year after year, we see both minor and major changes that have taken the original M-Series from just an okay mountain sled to a very competitive one. There's no question that the next big area of the M lineup that needed improvement was the 800 engine, and anyone who's been living anywhere other than under a rock knows the SeaTech 2 800 is finally here, and it's everything we'd hoped it would be, and more. For 2018, all M8000s get the new motor, and it alone would be enough to entirely change how this sled performs on the mountain. But this season, Arctic Cat wanted to do more. They wanted to push the M8000 even further than any of us expected. Of course, the biggest news is definitely the new SeaTech 2 mil. We've spent considerable time with this motor at sea level in the ZR platform, and to say we've been impressed would be a huge understatement. The SeaTech 2 800 is everything the old 800 wasn't but needed to be, yet it still maintains all the things we did actually like about that old Suzuki twin. It makes loads of bottom end torque, yet still screams up top. If you only ran it at full throttle, you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference. Which is a good thing, because if there was one area Arctic's old 800 shine, it was at full throttle. On top of the huge improvement in both bottom end and mid-range power comes an even more noticeable and important improvement in how this engine runs in general. It starts immediately after turning the key. It idles smooth and clean and never loads up. Throttle response is crisp at any level and there's a noticeable decrease in smoke from the exhaust, which all of us know is the absolute measure of how clean an engine runs, don't we? Engine characteristics like these are so important on a mountain sled, even more so than on a trail sled. This is because in the mountains, controllable power delivery and throttle response isn't just a nice thing to have, it's an absolute necessity. As mountain riding becomes more technical, the need for controllable power becomes even more paramount. The new SeaTech 2800 produces power that can be massaged as smoothly or manhandled as aggressively as you might like. So yes, the new motor is a fantastic and long overdue upgrade for this sled. But as I said earlier, Arctic Cat had bigger plans for the M-Series in 2018, and they're calling this long list of changes the Ascender platform. The most obvious difference between the older platform and the new Ascender is the bodywork, and its design is about much more than just a sleeker, sexier new look. It provides a 10% narrower profile, which helps to improve side hilling performance and more importantly, reduces paneling out. Additionally, the running boards are one inch narrower and the new bodywork allows the rider to position their feet a full two inches further forward. Finish all this off with a 1.125 inch drop drive shaft that results in a nearly 10 degree drop in the approach angle of the track and you've got a sled that isn't just different, it's significantly better at getting on top of the snow. This new bodywork is definitely sexy, but it comes with one major benefit that you won't appreciate until it's time to remove it. The new panel design is very similar to the 9000 series turbo sleds and utilizes the new quick release fastening system that is, I can say with confidence, the slickest and easiest to use on the market. Ergonomically, the Ascender based M8000 is very similar to the older versions of this sled, which is good. I always liked the ergos on those sleds and found them very comfortable to ride. The Snow Pro package itself comes with a few nice goodies aimed at fully utilizing all the new capabilities and performance this sled has to offer. 
A three inch paddle on this 8000's 153 inch power cloth sneaker provides unreal traction. Even with the shorter track length, it still climbs like, dare I say, a cat on a screen door. Fox float threes up front and on the rear arm are lightweight, but in my opinion, don't provide the best ride and are not adjustable. A deluxe digital gauge includes an altimeter, ice scratchers are standard, as is a lightweight brake disc and a rear storage bag. Is the 2018 M8000 an improvement over the 2017 model? Yes, big time. It's easier to get on its side, easier to keep it there, and it maintains its composure in a wider variety of situations. It panels out less often and the power delivery is outstandingly smooth. It is everything we knew an Arctic Cat mountain sled could be. How it stacks up against the competition? Well, we're gonna need a bit more time to figure that one out. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris, see endless possibilities, MBRP Performance Exhaust, Race Inspired, Trail Proven, and by Art to Cat, share our passion. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more content from Snowtracks TV, click the like button and subscribe to the Snowtracks TV YouTube channel.